Hi, Stan. <laughs> What's up, Marshall? <laughs> Welcome back. Here we are, back in the studio for the Draftsman Podcast, live and in person. It's not live. <laughs> oh, no, no, but uh, like in person, at least. Well, alive. We are live to us. Yes, we too are alive. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Everything okay. was live at some point. That's right. Everything was live at some point. Or Otherwise, it would not have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie's right. Okay, true. What's new? Do <laughs> um, you want to roll the intro? Oh, that, hey, that was the intro. It wasn't even awkward. Now it is. It's the Dressman Show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, well, I'm, first I'm excited to open up these wands you brought in. These wands I brought in. <laughs> yes. Okay. Why did you bring this? Well, I figured since sometimes we have emotional experiences on this <laughs> podcast, but we don't want to interrupt each other. Okay. Uh, that this is a way to... Interrupt each other? Yeah, to send out a <laughs> sign that we feel pleased or displeased. Oh, gosh, I guess you have to put these together. I'm sort of expecting them to come. <laughs> so... Oh, man! There's only... <laughs> only sad face i thought that it was going to be on one side a happy face and on one side a sad face there is only sadness flashback i haven't even opened it up i'm assuming one side has a happy face <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if they didn't if you only got one option emotional one so sad on that this makes more sense marshall because if there was a happy face, I would never. I wouldn't just be sitting here with a happy face up all the time. I w I would. <laughs> it's like Stan, go go then go. You'd never. You'd have to constantly be checking the wand to see if it's on the happy or the sad face. Oh, and there's another thing too. If it was a happy face, I'd be showing it to you, but I'd be looking at a sad face, so we'd end up with kind of an emotional contradiction. Right. Yeah. So if I got the wand up, you know immediately. Oh, he's not. Yeah. Happy. I don't even need to look at it. Yeah. Just, it's just yeah, the wand okay. itself is the. Yeah. <laughs> I think we need a full description of these sticks for the audio only audience. Okay. Oh, it's literally we're, a stick with a with a sad face on it. We're holding <laughs> a yellow stick that has a like a happy face, but instead of a happy face, it's a sad face. And yeah. it's it's visible. Well, this was a cool idea. No, this is good. Let's let's yeah. do this. Okay. So sad well, face. They'll be well, ready if we need them. Well, you gotta. Are you, I, these I are... feel like I should have one of those for when you guys go over an hour. <laughs> Why don't <laughs> we I just give you mine? We wouldn't see it. <laughs> well, wait. Hold on. Do we want to? Do we want to? Do we want to? You know, do the thing. Maybe we. Maybe we should. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> awkward. Uh, how uh, do we do this? We haven't talked about how we're gonna do it. I'm scared. Well, first we talk about how we're going to do something and then we really just extend it as much as possible yeah. to get people to pay yeah. attention. Who's going to say it? Charlie. Three, two, one. <laughs> Charlie's going to say it. <laughs> Draftsman is over. Oh! Oh. Sad face. Sad face. Well, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sad face. Sad face. Sad. <laughs> what are these for that. if you're not going to hold it up at this yeah. moment? Yeah. yeah. What is it we're saying? We're saying that Draftsman... Well... This isn't the last episode. No, no, no. But it's the last season. Yeah, yeah, it is. Marshall, why did you do this to us? I, I didn't do this. Well, you I, called me last night, yeah, I said, and you're like, I'm done. Screw you. No, no. This isn't worth it. No, that is not <laughs> what happened. I can do a single more recording with you, Stan, and no more. I'm out. Yeah. And I'm bringing yeah. sad faces. Yeah. To show how I feel. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to bring two of them. No. <laughs> and then no. you killed Scally. Uh, well, that's, yeah, that was sort of like the first hint. <laughs> yeah. that, I don't uh, know if the clues point towards Marshall, though. Mm. It's the way He's of all to flesh, frame isn't me. it? It's the way of all flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we kind of knew this yeah. at the beginning of season three. Yeah. So we, we've known this for a, a while. Yeah. We just haven't told anyone. Just to see if anything changes, but no. yeah, I think we're we're done. You yeah. know, <laughs> the, so we do have other things to do, but that's not the reason. It's it's it, it's it's part of the reason. It's part. Well, yeah, yeah but still, it, if that was the only reason, we'd still do this. Like, I, yeah. this was absolutely worth it. I think it's not a waste of time. It's like, yeah, we have other yeah. things to do, but I think it's still worth 
doing this. But I am so glad we did it. Oh yeah, I wouldn't change anything. Yeah, except these yeah, sad these faces. Stupid I'd make them dumb faces upside down. Yeah. Upside. Does it look like Ooh, it's smiling? Hey, yeah, it's like a guy who's smiling on his forehead. Brilliant. No, no, it doesn't. Not at well, all. No, it looks sad still, even upside down. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's sad. Anyway, well, it's because the mind is <laughs> able to kick in. Now the blood is in. rushing to its head. Oh no, <laughs> it's yeah. even sadder. Should we address more? Well, about the, the... well, the, I think the the big reason is because we're really just running out of stuff to talk about. Right? Is it... There is. There is a point where with a title like draftsman, <laughs> True. there's a limit and there are other topics I really do want to talk about for another year or three. And really? Yeah. Which ones? What are we... Well, storytelling is one. Oh, but that's a course. If it's, you're going to yeah, talk about storytelling a for a year, that's a course. But maybe, maybe have a podcast someday around storycraft. Or a workshop. Wait, wait, why, why, how would a podcast be? Oh, I, okay. I, you could do uh, yeah. a, a story craft podcast. Yeah, I, I, I don't know yet. Yeah, but, but there's. I don't see you doing that. I see you teaching a course on story yeah, or I a workshop. Too. Yeah, it, it's, right. it makes more sense it in does. that format. Anyway. But there's other but, options in the future, God willing. Oh, yeah. We got. This isn't the end of Marshall and Stan. <laughs> we. <laughs> Say that you guys are you're up. setting up an irony. <laughs> what? No, no I'm not. everything's great. Titanic won't sink. <laughs> I, I mean, uh. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy still love you very much. <laughs> yeah, Marshall, we're not yeah. firing you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're still, I, I, you're I still working on perspective. You guys, yeah. do you want him to ever finish the perspective course? That is a very <laughs> important part of this. Is that I. You, you all say, when are you going to do the perspective course? How about buy that perspective course? Yeah, gosh, there's Skelly over there waiting for the perspective course to be produced. If I'm going to produce the perspective course, I've got to focus on that. So this is to, yeah. this is to let me get my work done. Yeah. We, I have a bunch of new projects as well. And when we do voicemails, every question we get, it's like, oh, well, we addressed that already. Go listen to that other episode. And we're just repeating ourselves, and yeah. I don't think that's a good use of our time. I don't either. You know, John Cleese, not to compare what we've done on any level. I don't know who John with it With Monty Python. Monty oh, okay. Python yeah. was a TV show. I know what Monty yeah. Python is. Yeah. I don't but know the, the actor's name. The, thing the actor is, or director, writer? John Cleese was one of the one of the main guys. I mean, he was the, one the of the- Writers or actors? Writer and performer. Oh, okay. he was a uh, he was a strong creative force behind it. Which one was he? The, the, he was the, the big, the big guy the who did the silly walk. Wait, the bald dude with the white hair. No, 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 no. They're all bald. They're, they might talk. Just... Bald dude with the white hair. <laughs> like yeah, you, can be, you can be bald on top. Yeah. And like mostly, you're the white, you're the yeah, bald dude with the I'm white the hair. Yeah, with that's the white a description. Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense in no. my head. And should, I, head. should I go back to the uh, John Cleese thing? Yes. Yes. When they first did that TV show, it was like no TV show before it yeah it was absurd and zany and funny and he said it was so wonderful it was like running through a field of lilies and flowers and you could just pick anything you want because they had such creative freedom uh -huh. but then after they'd done two seasons i think he said that by the got to by the time they got to the second or third season everything they were doing was simply a rehash of what they'd done the first season when they were so excited and mm -hmm. so when they were at the peak of their popularity and they could have continued making yeah. money, he decided it's, it's time to go. We didn't do this for the money. No, we didn't make money. <laughs> and, <we> didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it ran it was, its course. Yes. It, had, had a, it, had, yeah, it, it ran its course. I got a question for you. Okay. What was what were some of your favorite things about what we did on this podcast? Oh, are we doing we're doing this little reminiscing? I want to do a I want to do thing? one because there's one thing I do want to keep doing over the coming years, and I want to see if are we talking about favorite memory or favorite like episode? What are, what are you asking me? Whatever, whatever. I mean, you got me to dress in a in a hazmat suit. <laughs> I that's the one I was thinking of. Blow, do do do, do 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 do. -do, -do. When it's the dressman show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I think I, that I'm not proud of the that. the reason that probably came to mind is because it was so cool visually. Watching it later, yeah, I was like, was, Oh, yeah. that is so cool. 
Yeah. That was a cool episode. Yeah, yeah pile all over the set, meth. the blue meth candy. The, yeah. the giant pile of cash. We still have that around the yeah. office. <laughs> Every time we have a guest come into the office, <laughs> it's in Katie's room and they'll like peek in and there's like a pile of cash. Yeah. Or someone will pull it out. Last time, I think it was Ryan Benjamin, <laughs> he was here and Katie was just kind of like holding it and he thought it was real. He's like, damn wow. guys, okay. And, then, and Katie played around, al along with it for a little bit too long. <laughs> Eventually I was like, Whoa. it's fake. We, we don't just carry cash. Yeah, we're in, yeah, yeah. we're an like online business. It's like a symbol yeah. of the success of the Proco Studio. The way yeah. Skelly is a symbol of the, the, the de demise of draftsmen. Okay, yeah. now anyway, the, 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 cool the, the so hazmat what, crystal meth episode was not my favorite episode. And, but it... Well, I, I had my favorite parts that were yeah, my yeah, favorite yeah. part, but not like the most uh, useful. Okay. It was a drug episode. It was about drugs. It was about drugs. <laughs> yeah, we did an episode about drugs and I had a number of people in my life who told me, you know, that really, that episode really wasn't worth doing. <laughs> oh, it was. Was it? So you felt good about it. I like that. I would do it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. That episode, I'll do that episode again. Episode, that was fun. That's what creativity is about. We went all out. We we got an idea. We executed we on it. We ran with it. Yes. Oh, in that's, our youth. That's the <laughs> thing is we, <laughs> we, we're having a hard time figuring out ways to do that again. That's why it's, we're, we're done. Okay. Now, uh, that brings up something. What? You still haven't an answered my question though. My favorite episode? Yeah, or fa our favorite things we did. Favorite? Well, the um the do it yourself recreating art school was i think if we were to keep only like a little group of episodes i would just yeah. say well, we just keep those and that's that's it that's all that's left over of draftsman i think it's the most useful series but what else yeah like, well yes the, the i most feel useful most funny i have most gotten what? more what positive about? feedback about the art school as project yeah. than anything else we've done because it was aimed at this audience who are people who want to get their craft up, mm -hmm. but for any one individual, it can save them a hundred thousand or two or three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So it was that was a, a good influence. I think I felt good about how it all panned out. Yeah, my other favorite thing is getting Manscaped as a sponsor. It didn't <laughs> Just kidding. Last, did it? <laughs> I was one. Yeah, they did it once. Yeah. I don't. I don't think a, a lot of our audience. They didn't get up, into it, yeah, especially since you put it on during savers. the Terrell Whitlatch. Oh, wait, what? Are you serious? <laughs> that's how it started. Is that how it ended up? It, yeah, did it end up on Terrell's episode? Up. Oh, God. I apologize Sorry, to Terrell, Terrell. about oh, it. God. It's like, you're, you're here to see Terrell Whitlatch and then your commercial. Yeah, it was kind comes. of, when I found out that was happening, it was too late to do anything about it. Yeah, we don't <laughs> choose. They, they stay like, hey, you know, we agree to the sponsor and then they're like, okay, here's the date. Mm. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I mean, so you didn't whatever. even know that. I mean, huh? <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. She's fine with it, right? Okay. So there was one one great <laughs> accomplishment. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Sad yeah. face. This one. Uh, yeah. But no, I actually am very happy that I got that as a sponsor. Well, them, them, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm glad I went there. Mm -hmm. It was fun. I'll do it again. I didn't go there, like, go there. Okay. Keep, keep, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> keep going, or you want me to go next? <laughs> of favorite things we did. I liked what you thing while it lasted. Marshall, you know what it's time for? What is it time for? What's your thing? What's your thing? What's your thing? What's your thing? What, what, what's your thing? 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 Oh, man. Wow, you're good at this. Hmm. One of my least favorite things is Christian's crazy questions. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, I'm just kidding. It, I actually, I was actually kind of bummed that people didn't seem interested in it. Yeah, yeah <laughs> When yeah, we announced that we wanted to do that, people, as a, people in the comments were like, what? It didn't hurt his feelings. No, I he, don't he, think so. He knew that he was prized by people who loved him. Well, he quit right after that. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> we'll never see him again. <laughs> he left San Diego. He That's right. He's out of town. Yeah. He's traveling across the country. Okay, what else? Jeez, you're really trying to make me think here. Or you can just throw it back at me. Hold on. One more. Okay. And I'll throw it at you. Okay. Um, you remember I have a bad memory, right? You haven't just eaten, have you? 
No. Oh, okay. No. No, I'm good. This okay. is pre-lunch. Okay. Oh, the the explosion. But no, you're you're thinking bigger things, right? Not like one individual yeah, moment. Yeah, it's like as we did about 90, we will have done over 90 episodes of this. I know what you're probably thinking of. What are you thinking of? Book reviews. I... Is that what you're thinking? That's the one oh, I thing. knew it. I knew it. That's not one of my favorites. I'm not I'm not excited that we did book reviews now. Okay, well here's I'm why. sure they were useful, but yeah. I didn't enjoy doing them. No. I would like someday among a group of people, you could be part of it. A book club? No, no yeah. thank you. No, thank you. You're not interested. I'm in not interested in a book club. So I I mean, it's not my thing. I like to create more than I like to consume. Well, I don't like consuming nearly as much. Like, I know how useful it is, and I do it. I read book, or I, I listen to book, and I do enjoy them, but I always just want to get it done and do something. Okay. It, so, no, it's not my thing. Well, that's an admirable quality. It's just, it's just the quality. And I admire you for it, okay. even if it's not admirable. <laughs> yes, yeah. you're, you're the, it's the Leonardo da Vinci thing about the, the doer is more well remembered than the learner. Learning is the highest achievement of humans, he says. But the doer. He could do it with an Italian accent. Uh huh. Yeah, but. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, anyway, go ahead. I don't want to steal it. I feel like doing the book reviews. Yeah. Even though it's hard to do them in a week, I would love it with a circuit of people who like to read books and report of them. Here's how it's creative. When you've read a book and you've read it really deeply and then you're going to make a presentation of it and simplify it for a person who may never read the book, but they're interested in an hour or so's synopsis of it. I think that is a service. It benefits the listener. It certainly benefits the teacher. Uh, I enjoyed those. They were a lot of work, but that was work that I enjoyed. And I would like to do it to where it, 10 or 12 books a year to spend one month in them. Mm -hmm. And be among other people who would meet every week, and they'd give their uh, short version uh, of a book that they got into. Oh, Stan, what a, what a yeah. life that would be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> you can, well, okay. That, yeah. I, how did I know that's what you were going to say? You knew. Yeah. He's the bookshelf man. Yeah. And there's another what, thing we could say about the, the demise of the podcast. The demise. Um, one of the reasons why some of you have enjoyed this podcast is because you have the edited version. And yeah. the option to edit this out is one of the, uh, edit out the stuff that's boring. Charlie has done so much of the work. And when you do it spontaneously, because we're not scripting these, we're sitting in front of here, the camera goes on, you know, a little nervousness, yeah. a little energy. A little and awkward intro. Yeah, it makes it yeah. so that the, the better stuff can happen, but also the, the worst stuff can happen. The kind of stuff that it's just, you didn't, nobody would ever want to sit through that. And Not the I, worst. I don't think there's ever been like, that's the worst. Yeah, like those two and a half hour ones that uh, that Ooh. went on. That uh, well, I, it, they were it, unorganized, it, yeah, but it, it's it, not it, like you said something incriminating. Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, now you know you've I got did, plenty of that. I did. Hey, you I did, did what? Say, yes. Wait, Here what? Here's something. Here's something that I wish if I had written it, <laughs> I would have done it different. Uh -huh. It was in the drug episode. It was where I talked about a brother who lived on LSD for a year, huh. and I exposed stuff about my family life now yeah. what i didn't say did, on did that, that go live pardon did that actually make it into the final oh it made it in, yeah it made oh, okay. it in yeah so you're just kind of highlighting that again but <laughs> i but here no here's Great. the thing before we ever recorded that podcast uh -huh. i talked to everybody in my life including him and i said it would it be okay if i was to to say this because you've said okay. it so freely you got he his said, permission he said yeah marshall it's okay you can say that you can say that and then after I did it in front of the microphone, uh, I called him up again. I said, we actually recorded it. And, uh, you know, if you wanted it, he said, Marshall, it's totally okay. You can say it. But I didn't say that. Didn't say what? On the podcast that I had cleared this oh. with my brother. Oh, so you're clearing it now. N well, Wait, did I'm people clearing comment? it now, like, oh my but God, what you're... happened that week was, man, you, you just... Uh, revealed information. I got people in my life telling me that was not appropriate to say that much 
about and I said no it's totally okay with him and I cleared it out but I didn't say it on the podcast right. and because of that those are the kind of things that when you write when you write something to be performed or read you have the option of going back and editing it without having to pull it off YouTube without having to call Charlie and do a voiceover come back into the studio re-record so I am glad that we did spontaneous stuff I feel like it brought out some of our best I don't think and, they would have, I would have done any different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it wouldn't, wouldn't you wouldn't want to script a podcast. No. No. But you would want to script a course. You would. Yeah. And so that's what I am looking forward to doing. Stan, since we got a flow going, why not <laughs> yeah. tell me more of your thoughts about our three seasons oh, of Draftsman? Let's see. Well, what are you most excited to do with all this extra time we're going to have? <laughs> I want to get to work. I want to get well, to work on the perspective course? Perspective course. Yeah. Did you want more than that? <laughs> no, I guess not. That, that's your only thing, huh? No, that's I've, got, be... I've got other things going. I'm still teaching a little bit. Yeah. Hey, well, since you brought that up, yeah. let me tell you one of the best things that's happened in my life because of this Draftsman podcast. Other than your son. My son? One of the best things that's happened in your life? It has to be your kids. You didn't let me finish the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best things that's happened in my life as a result of... <laughs> The Draftsman Podcast, oh. which was not my son. He was no. born on a podcast. Was, we did not create your son. No, it was way, way <laughs> back. We did not attempt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to create no, any more sons. No children have been created as a result of this podcast. Hey, you don't know not. that. Yeah. Not, well, well, you yeah, yeah, you're that. right. It could be. There probably have been. That's right. There, there may be, because when you really get down to how somebody met somebody and said, because of the hey, podcast. don't you love Marshall and Stan's empty banter? <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I hate don't it. Don't you love and how then, awkward yeah. it is? Yeah. 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 So what is it? What is the most, the, the, the best thing happened in your life because of this podcast? Happened yeah. Is that this podcast, which has gone out all over the world, has brought me really good students. Ah. Some of them who've taken my junior college class and uh, they have to pay a lot of money because when you're out of the state of California, mm -hmm. it's really expensive. But some of them have found me that are within the state of California and so they just take it remotely. And yeah, I have had some really good students and for the, the other classes that I do. Yeah. The Bridgman one, the composition one. It's just opened up. That's cool. That's yeah, good. An audience yeah. of people who really want the teaching and are not locked in a classroom with a teacher that they don't want. That's yeah. been, that's been great for me. A lot of new relationships, a lot of new friendships. Cool. <laughs> How about for you? Well, you know, it's been a drain, <laughs> a drain on my energy. It's I taking up much of my time. From my family. <laughs> Constant <laughs> agony. Uh, no money whatsoever. To be done. It's from Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, you know, actually I, I was pondering this, I think at the beginning of the season, I think I've gotten way more comfortable just talking in front of the camera yeah. and that's, that's a good skill. Yeah. I think it's been just like, just getting, you know, all, all these hours talking yeah. to you about random stuff. Yeah. Like you don't do that. Nobody turns on the camera and just starts talking about something. Of course you can get too comfortable. What are you suggesting? <laughs> He's trying to ruin you now. What did, did I get too comfortable? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too relaxed. And it's sort of like the energy's not out. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm out. This is it. Yeah, this is it. No, this is the last season. I walked off the I, set I swear, once. I'm not yeah. doing any more seasons with you. I, I walked off the set once. You remember which one it was? Wait, you did? Yeah, don't you remember? I remember like, this happening, but I don't remember what the it was. Context. It was the wait, drug wait. episode. You walked off the I, set. I walked like off for the real. Set you walk. You're like I'm done real. on the on the drug episode. Why? Wait. Oh, but we were done. You walked off. Oh, and yeah, we yeah. were done already. I, I it was a gag. Before, no, it was a gag. Yeah, you did it for a show. You were showing off. Okay. You You're like, look at this. I'm too good for this. I'm yeah. Getting out of here. Even though I just did the okay, whole thing. Well, let's see <laughs> you do it for real. <laughs> no, no, I take it back. I take back. <laughs> you think I would? Really? Yeah. That <laughs> gonna... might be the end of this one. Yeah, I don't think we've recorded enough. Our sponsors would be mad. I think they they make us do at least thirty five minutes. Sure, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> they just they come in here and they're like, "Oh, whoa, dude, look what just <laughs> happened." <laughs>
Uh, I didn't that. know that. Describe that this for the is audience. one of those so, surprises. The smiley stick that we're holding, I smacked it and it bent and it cracked. And you know how you can crack a glow stick and it glows. How they That's know. what happened. Should I do it? Now? I smacked it like that and it it cracked in the middle. Wow! So you just I? crack it. Have you you have you never? I did not owned, know. Just crack it in the middle. Yeah. Wow! I was trying to show how our sponsors are spanking us, <laughs> and it just like illuminated the room. Well, it's beautiful. Yeah. So why are these? Why do these glow? What is the purpose? <laughs> like, yeah, to you're show not gonna... your emotions in the dark. Well, if you have it glowing in the dark, you're not going to see the face very well. You I'm not that though, interested in the face. It does come through. I, I wanted Only a happy. Only the very center. If, of if it. you if see. you cra if you break the if you break the little disc, yeah. if you smack it really hard, I think it turns into a smile. Oh, is that how yeah. these work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you break it in half and that's a funny joke. Yeah, well, we're done <laughs> <laughs> Okay uh, We are ending the podcast because of you And no, we need to reminisce about it. Yeah, what is your favorite moment your favorite memory one? I need to think about okay What's the first one that comes to mind? Uh, did we have any times where there were really big laughs? I, I remember a few times where there was genuine laughter. Yeah, one of them was the the explosion cannon thing. Oh, and I'm Stan Prokopenko. I'm the other part of the show. I... Oh my god, what the f*** is Whoa. happening right now? Holy s***! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great to remain calm. What the hell is your problem, Sean? <laughs> The explosion didn't phase me at all. I don't think that I even flinched. Yeah, you. Oh my god, the footage of you just like staring unblinkingly. Off. You're like, did something just happen? You're just like staring. <laughs> That's you know the talent. and there's confetti falling from the sky, and you're like, what? You know the the talent code. That's an acquired skill. Yeah, you work on it. You just don't respond to sounds, and so yeah, I feel proud. To that because you really, really responded to that. Oh uh, yeah, man, that was. I mean, deal. when somebody shoots a cannon in your face, yeah. I think the good, the proper reaction is to freak out. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I'm, I'm also proud of my reaction. Yeah, so that's right. So each, uh, evolutionarily, we take two roles in the process. Yeah. Of yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I can tell you a moment that I, that. I thought was hilarious. I want to hear. When in the creativity episode, Stan came up with the scuba diving bed bugs through the ac <laughs> d that exercise. Yeah. yeah. I How for one would love to watch a show about scuba diving bed bugs. <laughs> scuba diving bed bugs. The bed is a water bed. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, the bed is a water bed, and bed bugs are scuba diving. You actually animated that, huh? Or I, you I drew an image of it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was great. Scuba diving bed bugs. How about you? You have any most positive memory? A moment? I feel like we need to scroll through the episodes. Yeah. We, How we about if you gonna... just list the titles? <laughs> list the titles really quickly. <laughs> okay. And I'll see if I have a positive okay. memory of it. Yeah. So we're gonna. A lot of this will get cut out. You bet. It's just better. Oh come on. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if Charlie left this in? <laughs> that that would get you to say, yeah. <laughs> let's bury it. <laughs> I mean, the more you say, the more likely it'll be in. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, the more you comment on We're the... trying to... Maybe we shouldn't try too hard to get people to rejoice that Draftsman is over. What's your worst memory? Uh, the drug episode. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, seriously? Uh, it's, yeah, it's the one that I feel like uh, that didn't need to be done. This is focusing on the negative. Yeah, and mostly by you. <laughs> We're supposed to be focusing. Hey, we started to focus on the art school as project. Oh, man. So far, we've released 88 episodes. 88 episodes. 88. It'll but be we've recorded... since. We, we have, like, what, 10 recorded so, so we, far we, that we haven't done published. almost 100. Yeah, we're going to have, what, 100, 100 or more? Yeah, probably, anyway. Probably, probably. 90 hours, which makes sense. I mean, 88 episodes, yeah. about an hour each. 4.1 million views. Wow. This is just YouTube, by the way. This does oh. not count podcast listens. Okay. Got That's it. just YouTube views. So, fear of critiques and attempting photorealism. That was our first one. It's a very first episode. But it had some value. Yeah. Our biggest art mistakes. Hmm. Yeah. I was very glad that I got to put on my first, uh, my first professional job on there. I was proud of that. It was the one with the hands that were on backwards. 
me. But I'd like you to look at this picture, those of you watching it on the video, and think you could study anatomy with this guy. Oh, yeah, that was great. Okay. Art parents. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that was a good one. That's something that a, really it, stuck it, with mm -hmm. people. Huh? It did a lot of good in people's lives. Yes, it gave them a new yeah. metaphor parents. that they had to question because some people did didn't you, want them as pets. Did you come yeah. up with that or did you get that somewhere? I think I got it somewhere. I don't think I came up with it. Okay. Yeah. Shoot. I oh, wanted well. to trademark it and sue you for using <laughs> That's it. That's right. How to learn anatomy. Hmm. That, was, that was a pretty good one, wasn't it? I think so. Because we really covered a lot of the anatomy books. Yeah. That was we, it was one, about yeah. as comprehensive. You just love books. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, there's one with yeah, books in it. Ah, yeah, I love that one. It, yeah. Robot art teachers. <laughs> I remember that, that was one. interesting. That, that one got me thinking a lot. The sketchbook that you almost completely filled with boxes. Mm -hmm. I still have that on my on the side of my desk there. I always think it's like a sketchbook that I haven't touched yet, and I open it. I'm like, God oh, damn it, Marshall! Man, you filled Marshall this whole thing. Put up. Boxes in there. <laughs> you ruined it. Drawing on both sides of the brain. That one caused me a lot of anxiety <laughs> yeah, that, and preparation. Yeah. And I was thinking when I asked you what's your worst moment, that's the one I was thinking. I couldn't remember what it was, but this, that's the one I was thinking about. Like, I totally remember just after we recorded it and before even before record, we before recorded, before we recorded, it. you were just so worried and you spent so much time and energy and thinking about that and how you're going to do it. I spent hours talking with peers about it before yeah, we did it. What the yeah, hell, because man. it was to go into the public arena to say that I don't think that this is a good book for young artists. <laughs> and to do that is to, you know, to put up a fight. So I did everything I could to to try to make it a balanced presentation. Yeah. 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 Well, good. You're responsible. That's part of the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too old to start drawing? Question mark? That did some cosplay good for fashion design? Question mark. That's the same episode. It's probably a voicemail episode. Okay. Drugs. Keep going. <laughs> Becoming move on more. Quick. Yeah, move, move, move. Becoming more creative. Ooh, wait. We did an episode on becoming more creative. Yeah. That was the the bed bugs. Bed bugs. Um, yeah. Advice for artists with kids. Oh, jeez. That was one that some people like felt like I'm not interested in. I don't want kids. But other people said, yeah. So that was a niche, uh, a narrow part of our market. What artists should know about conventions. We did a convention episode? I thought that was a good episode. But again, yeah, that was one of those ones like our audience is not all convention goers. People who have, uh, there's even a term for them, isn't it? For convention rats or convention I'm not mongooses. Or there's something about people who go to conventions a lot. Convention koalas. Something like that. It has to start with a K. But they just, they all through the year, they go through conventions. Convention kitties. Yeah. Well, whatever they are, they know the lifestyle of conventions. And I felt like we, as people who've just done, I've done convention convicts. <laughs> no, whatever they are. Okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> How to learn perspective. That I like that one. That was a popular one. Yeah. AI versus artist mm -hmm. or AI plus artist. Mm. Good. People don't like any of our AI episodes. I'm sorry, guys. But if you do a separate podcast, the people who did like it will go there because that's one of the things you're yeah. interested in. Yeah. yeah. Season finale. <laughs> no, no, that one did not go <laughs> No, over people well. hated the finale. We're doing the same thing, too. Season finale part two. Yeah, and here we are doing <laughs> all three seasons finale part No, that's still season one finale. Yeah, part, I know. Part two. I know. <laughs> We split people it didn't like it, and here we yeah. are at the end of three seasons doing the same thing on a bigger scale. Working from home. Mm. Wait, is that the beginning of COVID? Yeah. Well, are you sure? Because that's yeah. episode one of season two. That's because we started the season in yeah, you... April, and we didn't want to do the art school as project Sorry. without addressing. Yes, it was episode zero. Orient people. Season yes. two, episode zero. Episode zero, right? Oh, and COVID begins. I loved the working from home one. Oh, jeez. Even if the content Oh, well, it was, it was natural. I was just that so one? glad that, ah, oh, I can be here in my own home and do the podcast. It was that a was great That was just season. you two shooting the <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this whole thing is getting cut out anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep going. But the, it was. This kind of, I mean, this, this episode is us shooting the yeah. It is. So you're, you're gonna Charlie love can cut one. it all out? You're going to love this episode, too. Yeah. Eight benefits of going to art school. So now this is the whole do-it-yourself thing. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. If you're going to art school, listen to this. How to learn by teaching. That's still part of it. Mm -hmm. Going all in on art. Mm -hmm. Breaking rules to create style. 
how to something something because I don't see the rest of the title. <laughs> we went, <laughs> yeah. What artists should know about the gaming industry? That oh, that's Scott, Scott Flanders. Yeah. yeah. How to be a good student. I think that's a good episode for people. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a popular one. Really? How many? So far, I got the most comments on Proko.com. I see. And most good. people don't go to Proko.com to comment. Plus, this is a an older episode before Proko 2.0 was even launched. So, Well, art students are our audience. Yeah. How to learn composition. That was a popular one. Too. I like that one. The War of Art. Blah, book review. You didn't like it? Huh? You didn't like The War of Art? Oh, I love the book. Yeah. But you didn't like the episode? Oh, it's a book review. I like the episode. Yeah. yeah it's not yeah. a fun one, though. How to study masters. Mm-hmm. That was a good one. That's when we asked the community to ask us questions about what we're going to record. Mm-hmm. Showing off, saying no, and Marshall gets a prank call. <laughs> Wait, what was the prank call? Hey, Marshall Vandro. This is Johnny Bulldog, your landlord. If you listen to me, I'll tell you something. You get me laid on one more rent check, I swear to God, I'm going to shove your big bulbous nose right through the back end of your skull. And if you don't figure out what that looks like, have Stan Pinocchio draw you the picture. It'll be a real hoot. It was my student, yeah. Mike Polinsky, who talked to oh, me. Oh, my geez. This is your landlord. <laughs> this is your landlord. <laughs> I got a prank call in, like, episode two That's of right, season one yeah. from, by my from, cousin. From your cousin. <laughs> I hate you, Tom. Are you ready to hear it? I don't know whether I am or not, but go ahead. Okay. Hello, this feather. I want to have draftsmen. How do you draw thick Oh, oh God. I need to know <laughs> for my art students. How you draw thick, thick, uh, veiny, veiny. Uh, thank you. God, Tom, so immature, <laughs> dude. You know he's working with Kanye right now. Can you believe it? He's Kanye to- is a celebrity, or yeah, he. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> you don't wait. No, come on. Kanye West. Yes. He, uh, you do know Kanye. I think, or something From like. what? Didn't he run for president or something? <laughs> that's what I, that's yeah, what I, I forgot about that's that. That's how I knew about that. Is Kanye true. West, is that is true. Wow, Kanye ran for president. Um, he didn't win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, was he disqualified? What happened? I don't I don't know if he, he was wasn't like he wasn't on the ballot or something. I, mean, I don't remember. Whatever. But anyway, yeah, my cousin works with Kanye now. Really? Fr- yeah, it's amazing. That's a good thing, right? Yeah. Good, good career move. Yeah, he's like touring with him and stuff. Dude. Oh, and he helped us. That's cool. He helped us do the jingle, the draftsman jingle. Oh, right. So Kanye, yeah. did? Kanye yeah. West made the draftsman jingle. Yeah. From that? the creators of Kanye's new album comes mm. draftsman jingle. <laughs> <laughs> We got the you know chronology wrong yeah, there, but yeah, but you know oh from the creators of Draft and Jingle Michael, comes Kanye Kanye's, West you know. yeah <laughs> following in our heels there you go Oh, uh, geez sorry Tom but you deserve it okay taking risks to get your dream job mm. that was with Anthony Francisco mm-hmm. oh yeah people liked Anthony and for yeah, good reason yeah of course uh, can you separate the art from the artist that was not a good episode I personally enjoyed the discussion yeah i don't know if i don't remember if it was a good episode or not but as just kind of like a a discussion because we had that discussion with the team on slack before Mm -hmm. we even recorded i just thought it was a really fun thing to talk about yeah the art night rises that one night well received yeah Yeah. she kind of took it ran oh yeah Mm -hmm. exploring diversity in art with jennifer wang Mm-hmm. That was a controversial episode. That got the most comments of any episode. You know what the funny thing is? Tell me. It has zero comments on Proko. Is that right? Yeah. It's like the least commented episode on Proko.com. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. That, I mean, it, it, I think it's also before we launched, but still a lot of these episodes that were, you know, published before we launched, well, not a lot of them. Some of them have a lot of comments. That one surprisingly has a zero. Yeah. The do or oh, art and fear. I like that one. The do's and don'ts of social media for artists. Yeah, that was where you took it. I got a lot out of that. I took notes. They made it, they, they were good for me. What have you done since then on social media <laughs> that we should know about that that episode has helped you with? Nothing that I've done yet. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Now, do, I, do I detect sarcasm? Absolutely. Sad face. 
No, maybe there is. If you want me to think about it, I can. I can tell you. I. I you're, you're, so you're basically. Kinda, I'm saying you're lying. No, I'm not. I lying. got a lot out of it. I did get a lot out of it. I, let me tell you. Okay, you let got me tell you. Out of it. <laughs> One is, don't look at your stats over and over and over and over because it's a waste of energy. Is that what you did before? Yeah, I used to look at stats, uh, and it wasn't so much stats, but even, even just looking looking at your scale uh-huh. to see, gosh, I'm two pounds heavier than I was yesterday. Oh, I'm a pound lighter than. <laughs> It's, right. it, that was one of the things that you brought up is that the long-term trajectory, and that has influenced me to when I start to micromanage and get in on details, step back, get another. That's one that comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Keep going, Stan. Bad teachers. Bad teachers. I think there was something very valuable in the bad teachers one. I gave advice that I thought would be controversial, which is to make fun of your bad teachers. <laughs> but that, that we're inviting which is great people advice. to make fun of us. Do it. People do it all the time. We get made fun of the most. Because we're doing it publicly. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well. No hiding behind you. the privacy thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, developing your art critique chops. Yeah, we did that in that, two parts. That was in preparation for launching Proco 2.0, hoping to get people to get good at critiquing each other. Right. I don't think it helped. Might not have. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think people, a lot of people watch that episode. Yeah, I don't think those were like who, popular who, episodes. Developing your art critique jobs to yeah. help, you know, to critique others. Yeah, that that's, doesn't sound like but a see, popular episode. see, that's one of those episodes that's really valuable it when you is. have a group of people who say, we are going to be better teachers. Let's watch this episode. There was a follow-up episode to it also and discuss it. Yeah. Debate it, say what we liked or didn't like about it, but at least it begins the discussion. How to get useful feedback and learning to self-critique. That was the follow-up. Our first live Q and A. Mm. <laughs> nice. That was uh, that was Lightbox 2020. Then you did Todorovich, April Solomon, Jama J- Jarab- Jama Jarabayev, Jarabayev, Christian Nee, and then we ended the season two with a few of our favorite books for Marshall. Yeah. <laughs> An episode for Marshall. Yeah, and, and previous <laughs> to that, it was just me bringing on my friends, which was nice, yeah. you know. And then, yeah. but yeah, the, the favorite books was- That's when I had a baby and I was gone. And so we just right. kind of like, you, you took over and- You had a live ran human being the... come into your life and I yeah. had a bunch of books on my shelf. And, and friends. And friends, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was in response though to people asking over and over and over and over. About Marshall's bookshelf, Marshall's bookshelf. And so we went through a bunch of the books and I even put on my website as many of those books as I could get up there, you know, so here's what's on my shelf behind me. So look them up if you care about it. They change all the time, though. Nice. Okay. Cool. Now we're all the way at the end of season. Boy, this is this a- is season three now. Yeah. Uh, the value of good music. What? What is that? What so we started April with? Fools joke. Yeah, the April Fools. Oh, <laughs> like I don't remember talking about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great. Oh, I love that. That's a wonderful uh, April Fools joke. <laughs> it's just Marshall singing. Yeah, it's just Charlie fifty-five minutes. All of the. All of the ones from home too, right? None of them were here in the studio. Uh, yeah, because it was all the post. Um, post the, COVID. That was surprised you got about fifteen project. minutes out of it, right? Yeah, but we yeah. looped it like four we times. Yeah, it. well, looping it wasn't didn't seem like that good of an idea. <laughs> well, no, because it had to seem like a real it had episode. To seem like a real episode. Yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, the start of it was the fake ad where it's the pure moods parody. Imagine a world of pure creativity. Stan spilled, Stan spilled, but I'm bum Stan spilled the green stuff. Experience Stan pure Marshall, the green a star. soundtrack to unlock your full potential as an artist. Charlie narrated the pure mood. Early. That was a good one. That's a oh, favorite moment good. right there. Yeah, we got like uh, you like singing. <laughs> we we got ten thousand views. And some For and what? some hate mail, but some, some For what? on what on the April Fool's joke? Yeah, on the April Fool's joke. Not news back then. Oh, like on in the yeah. first week? Or yeah. Something? Oh, wow, something that's cool. Like that. Scribble to discover. I like that. I like one. that one too. Yeah. All right. <laughs> NFTs and the end of the world. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, okay, James Gurney's self education journey. Mm-hmm. Can this book make you famous? That was another Marshall episode. Design hit makers. Right? Yeah. Designing creatures. That the Terrell Whitlatch. Mm-hmm. This artist got his oh uh, the Netflix the uh, dragon. What is it? Um, that was Chris Appleton. Uh, yeah. Hey, did you know that Chris Appleton's Wish Dragon was the second most viewed 
uh, Netflix animation. Are you uh, no, no, it's the second most viewed Netflix uh, movie. Movie, yeah, any yeah. movie type. I, I think it was of of that year or of oh, whatever that period. That uh, day? No, no, it <laughs> when it launched for a five minute window. <laughs> I think it, no. You're dissing Chris. <laughs> no, I'm dissing your the, your delivery My of this. delivery of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good for him. It was very successful. But I have no idea what the actual. It was over a hundred million people who've seen that. That's impressive. Isn't that impressive? It is. I talked with him this week. He's, it means that he can, he can probably do another one, you know, <laughs> you get an audience like that. That was a great thing to, uh, I, I was very glad about that. So he disappeared for about six years, you know, to work on that movie and then to come out. Okay. You've done the movie. Mm -hmm. Movie looks good. Oh, the movie's a hit. Good feeling. Find your strengths. That's from, uh. Strengths Finder's book. And, yeah. Yeah cartooning that was one that sort of i got really excited about expressionism that one was well received it was yeah yeah and i enjoyed that one because i had to do a reverie and that was fun uh-huh yeah it's like the only thing i painted this year <laughs> no it's not true i also painted christian that's right and you painted it man beautiful beautiful technique well that. i painted gangster british christian <laughs> it's the one i saw right yeah, yeah. doesn't he look like a british gangster now that you mention it. <laughs> <laughs> no, in the painting, not in real life. Well, now that you mention it, he could be in real life too, yeah. I guess if you kind of yeah. put on some Somebody in a Guy Ritchie and, film. Yeah. <laughs> Psychology of Performance, your dream guest. Say it again. Psychology of Performance. Oh, yes. That was, <laughs> Do you not recognize yes, that I, book? Well, yeah. <laughs> or the, <laughs> sorry, the workshop? Okay. I love what you did with the intro, and I have thought about yes. it many <laughs> times since. That you took the time to go back and find every <laughs> allusion to it. That sports psychologist Eddie O'Connor talked about how uh, I can start recommending other resources like Eddie O'Connor's Psychology of Performance. Sure. Dr. Eddie O'Connor in the Psychology of Performance has a chapter on burnout. I quote Dr. Eddie O'Connor again. Okay, here we are. Hi, Dr. Eddie. Hey there, how are you? Oh, that was a wonderful intro. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Thank Creativity you. Insights. Oh, Creativity you can pull from writers. That was writing the natural way. Yeah. How to price artwork. That's, That's what we negotiated. Yeah. 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 That was, oh, one of my favorite moments. Yeah. Negotiating with you. Yeah. Still haven't billed you. <laughs> I will. You haven't. No. Wait, no, yes. Oh, because you're trying to figure out the tax. Crap. Yeah, but I, I did. I had to get a new resale uh, tax. God, number. just for that, Marshall. You I had to get it, given yeah, it to me and free. it only lasts for 90 days. And I told him, well, if I do this again, I'll have to, yeah, you can have to do it again. Uh, and it, how much money did you waste if you count your time? Too much. It, it ended up not being worth it. Yeah. Study art like you're playing a video game. Oh, mm -hmm. that's been the most popular in a matter of one week than we've Wait, done really? all season. It's been doing pretty good. He had 19,000. Jesus, you guys, you really love video games, don't you? <laughs> 19,000 views in one week. That is one of the popular ones, yeah. yeah. Wow. You know, people just thought Flint's mind was, was incredible. If you're any kind of an artist, you, you're going to find stuff you didn't know was there, but you don't find it if you don't keep doing it. And that's the Picasso argument, is you must keep producing stuff. Lucky stuff will not happen to you if you don't work. And the complaints that we got were about his tangents. and. Uh, People probably don't know how much was edited out, but his tangents are just part of who he is. And remember at one point when I mentioned something like about that, that this is a, a, a chaos, and he said, I'm a, to a non-linear thinker. I'm totally non-linear. So I have to figure out ways to compensate for it. Now, different brains have to do different things, but the thing I do is I have an endless set of templates. I'm going to use that episode in classes. I think I'm going to use that episode at the beginning of a genre class uh -huh. because he is so into that long bomb, see the big arc of where you're going to go, break it down into parts. Don't, if you have to, if you get thrown off track, see if there's any way that you can pull that back into the track of where you really want to go. I think it would be a great discussion opener for people who are going to spend one semester on the arc of their career. The genre that they're going to adopt or stake their claim for the, the territory of this genre. Yeah, and it was chaotic, but that was part of what was exciting about it, is that if your energy's up, 
for a guy who's just going to throw one ball this way, one ball this way, one, all over the place. You're going to have to be energetic. Otherwise, you just got to go limp and not, not know anything he said. So his, yeah. his way of speaking invites uh, a back and forth kind of play. Yeah. Well, cool. Good idea. Okay. Too much art. That was a fun one. Too much art was the one that you called the most useless episode <laughs> that we have ever done. Yes, but it was a fun one okay. to record. When you asked me that, I just shook my head. I was like, okay, I'll entertain this. And it was a fun one to talk about. But yeah, it, it, the question itself is stupid. It anyway. makes me think of, of, you know, medieval philosophy has gotten a bad rap because people call it the Dark Ages. People who study uh, the Middle Ages in Europe know that it was not the Dark Ages. There were terrible and dark aspects about it, but it was also the gestation period for the Renaissance. And there's a whole argument about that. But one of the things that I've been told about medieval philosophers is that they would debate things like how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. And it seems absurd. Okay. But what it is, is a game of let's establish what the rules are. Let's establish this, this fantasy world that we're going to be very precise in what we say the rules are and then how so it's we like a world building exercise it is it's a world you, you building have exercise to, it's okay. a christian's crazy question kind of but it's, it His gets really more like, sophisticated would you rather but they also do this stupid thing of like uh finding the parameters within that question. that's true they do end up becoming that for a while and before you actually answer a question yeah okay it can be an uh, a thought exercise and it can yield insight into life. It's like how, uh, McKee was the one who pointed this out m many years ago. The real question was how small is small? How, <laughs> okay. And you know, that was before people knew about molecules mm -hmm. or atoms or quarks or anything, but it was an exercise in a direction of darkness and shining some fantasy light on there to get an understanding uh, of it, which that's what the, is there too much art question was. It was a silly question in some ways, but yet it's a very serious question. It's why is the universe so filled with, with excess, with what's unnecessary, with waste? And is there anything that we can get out of that? Because it can be a tiring uh, thing when you look at how much of everything I do just gets swept away. And it, I felt like if, the use, if there was any use to the too much art one, uh -huh. it was to embrace the fact of waste. It was to embrace hmm. the too muchness. Okay. Okay. Well, anyway, I, we already did that episode. Yeah, I don't need to recap it. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, cut it out. <laughs> oh, there was one episode that has been on our list of episodes to record since the beginning of season one. Really? <laughs> oh really? <Yeah. laughs> we had we had an episode on our list and we never did it. You don't Was know? It? No. You really don't remember. I'd rather than me too. Actually, we did record it initially. We had technical issues with the very first batch. That's right. We redid some of them, but we didn't redo this one and we kept it on our list to redo it when we never redid it. Okay, what was it? What is art? Yeah. You, and you, were, you suggested that we redo it. I did. This season. How, what did we say? Did we say anything worthwhile? Kind of. I, thought, I mean, I remember listening to that episode that had technical issues mm -hmm. and enjoying the episode. Okay. Why don't we have a five minute conversation right now? Wh what, what the f is art? What do you remember about it? What, why are we doing this what art you, thing? What do you remember about the what is art episode? <laughs> I don't remember anything. I just remember that it was Shouldn't fun. Shouldn't we watch that episode even at no, high speed to no. get our head around it? No, it's been two years. Our, our Things have changed in our brains. Marshall, I also just had this conversation with someone else yesterday, so it's on my mind. But Marshall, what is art? <laughs> Because I don't think we're going to do an episode on this, but I think it deserves a few minutes in this episode since we're going through other, you know. I don't know that I want to go first. You don't? Would you be willing to go first on what is okay, art? Okay, let's not define it with a sentence yet. Do you think your definition of art is specific or broad? Like, does it, does it narrow down 
put his art into just like a very, very small group of things or activities? Or is, is it more of just like, everything is art? Where, where do you lean? It's a question I don't like. I know. That's why we haven't done this episode. Just entertain it. Just listen. Okay. I'll, I'll entertain it. Yeah. I would make it very narrow for a student who wanted to master a particular art form. And I would okay. make it very broad for an understanding of the world of and the history of art. So a different definition depending on what we're trying to do. Okay. How about you? <laughs> God, I hate your non-answers. <laughs> what would you like me to elaborate on them? I can maybe make you answer. should. Go ahead. All right. The best definition of art that I know of was from a book that I disliked a lot. Leo Tolstoy's "What Is Art." What? <laughs> you read a book about this? Yeah. He wrote a book and he's, and Leo read Tolstoy it. was a, Tolstoy, am I pronouncing it correctly? Tolstoy? Tolstoy. Prob I don't, actually, I don't know how to pronounce it in Russian. Okay. Probably Tolstoy. Okay. Well, he was a great writer, as you know, and he, and he, he wrote a book called What is Art? And I read it and he got so cranky in there in his narrow definition of what is art oh that he has he, a very narrow definition yeah, yeah well he specifically uh zeroed in on some beethoven sonatas to say that they were not art and anything that you've gotten paid for he say, would say is not art we did we did mention i, I did mention this at one point that's probably where I, the conversation i had yesterday with with the, i don't i'm not gonna name him, but um he he did define it as if you're getting paid for it it is not art. I and I was like, "What do the? F not agree? What the? F you have just you have <laughs> sad just face. Give me yours. I need to build yeah, yeah, two yeah, of yeah, them yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sad <laughs> face. That means that I, everything I totally that disagree, but anyway. Bach and Haydn and and anyone anything that Rembrandt Michelangelo for and yeah, it, 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 it's just it's a crazy. It, I I don't accept it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do understand where it's coming from, is that you contaminate the I, motives. I get it. The, yes, there is a, an effect of being paid for something on the thing you're doing. Yeah. But it doesn't make it not art anymore. It's, just, it's not so, to me, I guess this, okay, to me, it's not so freaking binary where one little thing oh. could all of a sudden make it not art anymore. Yeah. It's like, well, there's such thing as maybe bad art. Maybe if the artist is contaminated too much by this idea of money that it all of a sudden makes it bad art, then... When, when you take the extremes of I did this only for the money. Right. And I followed every direction to make sure I'm pandering to the audience in a way that... But <laughs> right. the thing is though, that is the thing that's most li least likely to be art, but it still could be. Right. It's still... You just, it's there's no absolutely. way to know uh, until it's, it's undergone the test of time. And more than a single person's or a single school's judgment. Yeah. Because that's what happens is that you get these, these academies and you get these, these Sanhedrin that come up over it and say, that is not art and we have decided. And then a generation goes by and it's celebrated as great art. So those, those judgments to me don't work. Now, yeah. Leo Tolstoy, cranky as he was, did give a definition that I liked. Okay. Oh, he gave several definitions? Well, he gave, he gave... Because, I mean, not, getting paid for it means it's not art, that's part of the definition? I read the book 25 or 30 years ago, okay. and I'm telling you this from, from distant memory. Uh -huh. He did give a definition, which is, is consonant with a lot of great artists' views of it. I get a feeling. I get an emotion. I get something that I'm, an experience, and I want other people to feel it too. And I can give them that feeling by encapsulating it in this piece of music, in this painting, in this story, so that then even if I die, that thing lives on. And when a person unlocks it, the genie of that emotional experience, they live it. Now, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm elaborating. He didn't, I don't think he used the genie thing, but the genie yeah. thing works a lot for me. 
because it's what got me excited about wanting to go into the arts. Yeah. Is that so much of my favorite stuff was from people who were long dead and yet they were they were affecting my feelings right now and could over and over. So I like that one. How's that work for you? I like it too because the definition I currently have locked into that I heard, I think Seth Godin said it mm -hmm. and I'm probably going to butcher the actual, the way he said it, but I think it's, he said it's a human act for the consumption of other humans. Okay. But he didn't mention anything though about it being uh, um, uh, connected with emotion. He, he probably did. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he did elaborate on it. Oh, but that's what I remember. Tolstoy, I, Tolstoy, I think used the term emotional infection. I think he did. But if he didn't, that's again the same thing. Is I've got this uh, infection isn't the best uh, metaphor. Yeah, the genie works better for me. But yeah, and I think we also mentioned on this podcast. Uh, I, I know I mentioned it uh, that Frank Zappa said art is whatever you put a frame around. That's too too specific it's but it, the the point is that how can you say that a slab of meat in a butcher's shop is a work of art put a frame around it and it becomes a work of art anything that you you package and say it's got a beginning middle and an end if you put it in a museum you see it from a different point of view and so it shifts your consciousness and th th i know Marshall, I, I that drawing i did of yoni is that not art because you didn't put a frame around yeah. it. You're being, yeah, yeah, but you're taking it too literally. You did it on a canvas, you put it up on a wall, that's essentially putting a frame on it. Is dancing art? Uh, dancing is art when it is ritualized. When you put a frame around it? Well, yeah, when you say, <laughs> it begins here. When you record it, it and put here. it on TV yeah. and put a frame around the TV. Yeah, yeah. So in other words, he's using the term frame better than infection. And it is to... Is the frame a metaphor or yeah, something yeah, else? to package it. Okay, then now it's just too broad. What is theater? Theater is something that you say, everything that happens within this stage, we're going to okay. say that's theater. And well, what if it's really boring? Well, sometimes stuff that you think is really boring. Do you know Harold Pinter's plays? Uh, or have you ever heard of him? No. Oh, he's, he was an amazing playwright who in the middle of the 20th century, among with the, uh, along with the absurdists, they did plays that seem to have no meaning, but some of them have endured really well because they're waiting for Godot is the most uh, famous one by Samuel Beckett. It's a okay. play where nothing happens. It's the fir whole first act. Is nothing it? happens? Two nothing happens? Well, Do the impression. I'm not sure what I'm getting at here. Are oh, you I want to hear it again. Oh, you mean the way I said it? No, no. <laughs> the impression of uh, McKee. Oh, nothing happens? Yeah, 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 I see, well, yeah, I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Nothing, yeah, okay, I'm nothing in life, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. You gotta do the real one, like do your best, McKee. I'm trying to carry through with a train of thought here. <laughs> and I'm trying to... You're trying to re break. derail it. So this, this explanation I was going to do was going to be a work of art, but you've made oh, me off the stage more I'm than once. I'm creating my own work of art. Yeah, you have. <laughs> you turned it into a meta work. Ooh. Now, let's see, where were we? Well, you're talking about waiting for Godot. Oh, wait, well, yeah, waiting for Godot. The first act is two tramps sitting by a, a, a roadside <laughs> and waiting for Godot. And the little goat boy tells them the, uh, Godot won't be here today, but he'll be here tomorrow for sure. Second act is the next day where they're sitting at the roadside and everything's the same, except I think there's a couple leaves on a tree that are different. And they, have these, they have these same absurd, meaningless conversations. And the little goat boy comes and tells them, oh, no, they have, they have a meeting with strangers too. Lucky. And I'm, I'm butchering this. Waiting for Godot. Is it fun to watch? It least? is, it is really interesting and entertaining. <laughs> okay. It's got vaudevillian shtick in it. It's got stickomythy, which is where yeah. you've got people talking in, in short bursts of sentences. Well, that's just the, like the art of conversation then. I mean, you don't. Yeah. Know, but Pinter took story it further. story within the conversation. It doesn't have, that means nothing happens doesn't mean that nothing actually happens. It might mean that they were just sitting there the whole time talking but within their conversation, there is a story. It's the Seinfeld style of show about nothing. Uh, yes, Sein, yeah. Seinfeld is probably a, a great grandchild of the absurdist playwrights of the mid 20th century who were French and, and Irish and, and British and... Yeah. And, Marshall, uh, did you realize nothing has happened so far <laughs> as since we sat down here? Yeah, a lot has We've happened. We've just been talking into this microphone. A lot has happened, happened in our brains. 
Yeah. And a lot has happened in our audience. They've tuned out. <laughs> anyway, you let's, let's see if, can, can we track, track this back? You know, positivity, uh, optimism is more productive. Yeah. Yeah. Marshall, do you want to finish your point about Pinter? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Let me think. Maybe. Is it worth keeping in? I mean, we won't know until you finish your point. <laughs> is it <laughs> worth keeping in? <laughs> okay. What? Uh, that's great. Let me, let me think for a moment. I want to see if I can gather my thoughts. Okay. One of Pinter's first famous plays was mm -hmm. The Homecoming. Okay. And it starts out with two men sitting in a room, a dad and a son. And the dad says, what are you doing with the scissors? What? What are you doing with those scissors? I said I need the scissors. What have you done with them? Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> okay. There's an article in the paper. I want to cut out. And he goes on and on and on. And, and, and the other guy says nothing. And then finally he says, why don't you shut up, you daft prat? What are you talking to me? And His son says that? Yeah. The, the, the conversation goes on and on and on through the whole play in ways that, are, that feel so... They, at the time in particular, felt so wrong for a play because there's lots of non sequiturs, lots of people ignoring what the other person said, and he was mm. criticized that it was unrealistic. And he <laughs> shot back and said, it is ruthlessly realistic. Now, I'm not recommending the play to you. The Homecoming, even though it was written in the 1950s and the, the language is tamed by today's, it is one of the most offensive plays that you could watch for the things that come out of these these characters mouths it's just shocking when i first heard it in my early 20s i hated it i never made it through i listened to it about 10 years later and i thought wow somebody else understands and the thing that pinter was getting at is that this is how much real conversation goes on in the world but in plays it's always artificial it's always made to be consolidated well, into it's something. Theater. It's theater. I mean, and he decided to put realism in a shocking way in front of people. And it was offensive, but it started to change along with those other playwrights. It's changed the way theater went. So that theater hmm. now tolerates tremendous realism. But even Pinter himself would say that he spent, he spent tons of time arranging the words for their poetic effect. It's just that you don't feel like this is a play. You feel like you're listening in on a real conversation uh, through somebody's window. But it's still, it took a while for that to take. So if art is going to evolve and ever grow, there needs to be an open enough definition, a wide definition to allow it to do that. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to master a particular art form, it needs to be narrow enough to say, if you want to be this kind of an illustrator, you don't need anatomy and perspective. In fact, it would be better for you to get rid of it. But if you're going to be a, this kind of an illustrator, art needs these skills. That way it's practical for that student and not looking at it from a great big holistic view. Well, by some people's definitions, illustrators aren't artists I know. at all. I know. <laughs> so what? I know. Yeah. So yeah. What, where do we, where do we? Where I do guess we... that's it. I mean, my, my comments on this are pretty simple my, my view on it is very broad like yeah i think almost anything can be art and i don't know what the point is <laughs> my question my question to the question <laughs> but is what difference does it make yeah exactly and then when there's a good answer to that then we can make an answer that will fit for this and not turn into an argument it would actually yeah. be a seeking together i guess it's just kind of annoying sometimes when people say this stuff all the time it's like oh but that's not art I'm like, oh weird i know what yeah. <laughs> and like a lot of people have this this idea in their head of what isn't isn't art yeah. and a lot of times it, it it can start by with the something like oh i i don't like that it's not art mm -hmm. and then they look for reasons why it's not and then they'll define it based on what they like and don't like the art and fear guys have some of that in them you remember they were they uh felt that art had to be confronting it had to be breaking a uh, new ground for it to be art. Mm -hmm. And I understand from a big art history point of view that that is necessary, that the story of art move on. Yeah. But it's, I, I don't think that it's, I don't think it has that much value for a student who's trying to learn their craft, trying to make a living, trying to do good work. Yeah. 
The reason the, go go ahead. The idea of being paid for it makes it not art is also within that what I just said where people start with something they don't like mm-hmm. and say, "Oh, that's not art." Mm-hmm. They'll just give an excuse for it. It's like some people be against money and, you know, selling out, mm-hmm. you know, those kinds of ideas. And so they'll say that anyone that gets paid for art, doing art isn't not art, an artist or whatever. I feel like it's, it's, they're just trying to define this based on their own um, tastes. Yeah. I always felt that if you cannot explain it to a six-year-old, there may be a problem. Hmm. If you cannot explain it to an 11-year-old, this is a, a sincere, bright 11-year-old who wants it, there's probably a problem. You can probably explain what the idea of being paid for art, making it not art to an 11-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, probably. But, but it gets away from the, the, the question, what is art, is the same kind of question of how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. Okay. It's like, okay, are we going to play this? Are we going to play it so that we say, seven angels? I've already, I figured it out. Well, how are you so sure, sure of seven? It's just seven angels. Rather than really having a discussion that is going to enlighten. And as soon as somebody says, this isn't art, I've made yeah. up my mind. Okay, I guess the reason this question needs to be talked about is because it actually does have an effect in the real world. When people look at something and say, that's not art. Like, I'm better. Or this is better than this. And, and it, like, it, there's no respect for something. I don't know. It, uh, it's just indulging my dislike of that art. Yeah. As opposed to what I'm doing, which is indulging my dislike of that definition that excludes this art. Okay, let's move on. Yeah. I didn't care that much about the question. I cared enough about it to read the book and to have conversations for maybe a total of five or six hours as a college student. But I don't know how it broadened me and it didn't help me be a better artist. Yeah. And I knew when I was a kid that that my favorite children's books were art and I knew when I was a kid that Mad Magazine was art and it didn't make any difference what anybody said about it. It was art, and I am glad that I did not get yanked away from the enjoyment, the legitimate enjoyment, of something that was art with a small a. It's drawing, it's story, it's funny writing. Uh, I'm glad I, I didn't go down that route to start to pick and choose as to what's legitimately art. Mm-hmm. I don't think I would have ever created anything if I had gone down that route. There's another reason why this question can be important. I think so. I did talk to another person a few months ago who doesn't like art because and his definition of art is too specific. And because of that, he just frowns upon the whole art world. Mm-hmm. Um, so he thinks art is pretty much just like these old paintings that hang in museums. Like that's it. That's that's what art is. Mm-hmm. And it's boring, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't like art. I don't know why people need to go to art school. I don't know what's the purpose of all this stuff. It's a waste of money. It's a, you know, like, well, so you don't like movies, right? You don't yeah. think children should read children's books? Mm-hmm. Like, you don't think that's beneficial? You know, you, you don't like music? Like, I doubt you would, would like your life if you could never listen to music again. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and it's like, well, that's art. So, wh- how, how could you say this is all pointless if your entire day is filled with art and it makes your day more enjoyable? Mm-hmm. And the definition of art in his mind is what causes him to have this opinion. Mm-hmm. So, that's another thing. Patty Shayevsky, the script writer in the late 20th century, mid to late 20th century, talked about how uh, critics, movie critics, uh, he said, can you imagine making your living writing about other people's writing? And, <laughs> and, and the interviewer said, you know, there's a legitimate function there. He said, oh, I'm not saying it's not a legitimate function. Can you imagine that, though? Is that he was so into writing his screenplays, writing his stories, that the idea of getting on the sidelines and commenting on it just seemed silly to him. And I always felt an 
uh, affinity with that. And yet, you've, you, you do need people who are going to look at that and say there is a difference between art with a capital A and these kinds and then the commercial arts and here's the risks of commercial arts and here's the risk of the stuff that only appeals to the elite. To get, the, to get your head around that whole category, that is a legitimate discipline. I don't want, I don't want some of my art historian colleagues to watch this and wish that we had brought them on to bring in the balancing opinion. We're just having because, a fun conversation. Yeah, we're, we are having a conversation of, of the kids talking about what the, uh, the grown-ups debate, and I'm just outside of that debate. Isn't this what we always do? Yeah. No, no, kids? no, it isn't what we always do. <laughs> when we did the one on how to learn perspective, how uh, to learn anatomy, when we did a few of those, when we learned about the creative process, we were on our territory where we have something that comes from experience. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have that many territories. That's why we're in the draftsman. See you later. <laughs> season three. <laughs> okay, Stan. What's up? What are you doing next? Um, we're probably gonna have some lunch. It's three o'clock and then... No, 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 no. I mean, what are you doing next in life after <laughs> post, uh, the post C three seasons of Draftsman? What's your next pursuit? Uh, I am starting an art studio. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be called Little Bang. Is, is this a brick and mortar <laughs> art? Don't ask me about the name. Little... I'm really happy with the name. Little Bank? <laughs> Little Bank? <laughs> I love it. No, it's not Little Bank. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's about making money. It's not a big bang. It's Little Bang. Little Bang. Yeah, not bank. Yeah, yeah, did yeah. you do that on purpose? <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to reveal whether I did that on purpose. Ah, uh, you did. <laughs> instead of bang. instead of Big Bang, it's Little Bang. Yeah. Little Bang. And yeah. so, you know, the Big Bang is about yeah. the creation of everything. Little yeah. Bang is about the creation of Little That's things. a very good name. Yeah, I thought of it. I was so happy. You want to hear how I got the slogan for it? What happened? <laughs> I asked the AI. Did you really? Did. This is like one of those oh, band Lord. generation names where you this just. Is, I was I was so f impressed, and it said, "Little bangs are short bursts of creativity." I was like, "What a ah! wonderful!" <laughs> Holy, f that is brilliant. Okay, so you're st and this is a brick and mortar studio. No, it's a, it's a it's, virtual studio. It's a. Well, I mean, it'll be artists from all around the world. So I'm going to yeah. hire artists and fund creations of really cool okay. art things all, all sorts of projects based like ai projects nft projects like superhero type stuff video games um all, all sorts of stuff ip wow. creation world building it'll be fun just basically little bangs little fun things that about you know creating stuff it's wonderful yeah is there anything that the, our audience needs to know about how they would be involved with it as consumers or producers or some kind of um you know, it's pretty early on mm -hmm. i literally just started thinking about this two weeks ago really? um but i've talked to a bunch of artists and and we're all they're already on board and working on some stuff okay they're really good too i'm so happy with some of the ones that have said yes oh. i'm not oh, gonna reveal great. anything but okay uh, well, since this was so much negativity, what? Is there oh, because any... I've been holding this thing up. Yeah, yeah. It might be that this was a real mistake for me to bring in these sad faces. Yeah, and we've got a dead body behind. I got us. some paint. You know, for the next one, let's do it. Paint over this yeah. and make, make a up smiley. for it. But is there anything that since we've we've reminisced over three seasons of Draftsman, Charlie, help me out here. Is there anything that we should have brought up in this episode, which is was unfocused and Anything, shouldn't this be a celebration that we covered a lot in three seasons? We didn't really celebrate much here. Kind of talked about what we liked, what we didn't, what's art. I mean, we, we kind of celebrated next. art. Just the, the whole idea of craftsmanship and, not, I mean, not craftsmanship, draftsmanship. <laughs> not really later, that. Uh, creation, creating mm -hmm. things. We, we did celebrate that with our passion and our... Your, your knowledge bombs <laughs> and your book reviews. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's the, those of you who like the book reviews, we'll be in, we'll be uh, in business together. We'll be in business. You're yeah. starting a, uh, a little company called yeah. Little Book. Little Book. <laughs>
<laughs> little bang. Yeah, I'm gonna steal it. I'm gonna see medium sized bang real quickly. Little yeah. bang book reviews. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> little bang book reviews. Well, why not? If, if you could, yeah. you could get littlebangbookreviews.com, and it'll be a. Comp- you wouldn't be breaking a trademark if I trademarked. Little well, bang. If, yeah. Well, well, we'd see about that. No, it wouldn't be. It's a completely different industry. Uh, yeah, but not necessarily. Don't, yeah, I know don't. not necessarily. I can't start like googlebookreviews.com. Yeah. I mean, right. It's if there's confusion in the marketplace. I yeah, think that's, that's right. the big That's where they get it. Yeah, but little bang book reviews, I don't think there would be confusion, at least not yet. You'd probably yet. be able to Well, how about if you do it and they just hire me as the guy who does who who heads up the book reviews? I really want to pour energy into that someday. You'll read about it. Your your little studio will read about it. My little studio will create it. Okay. That's good. I don't mind. And somebody will write about the things we create and then you'll right. you'll review that book. They'll give a synopsis of all the book <laughs> reviews and how they arced those book reviews over that several year period. Yeah. Okay. Well, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say how enjoyable this was. What do you mean? You're so I'd offensive. like to say it. <laughs> You didn't like this? You didn't like sitting with me here for an hour and nah, a half? Me meandered all over the place. Okay. Um, we're done. Okay, um, we're done. We're well, done. Should we say anything to the audience? What's next? What's next week? I'll tell you what. Let's do one last session on voicemails. Okay, Stan. All right, Marshall. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you for hosting. You, I mean, hosting, you know, the, it's your studio. It's the. Oh, yeah, physically. Yeah, 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 physically. Yeah, it's like we're thank, actually you're here thanking me for my space. hospitality. Yeah, yes. Thank you for your hospitality. You're welcome. Do you like my sh- coffee? I haven't drank your coffee yet. That was my tea. Oh, you, oh you're brought, about to have my sh- coffee. I brought my own coffee with me. <laughs> You've had enough. <laughs> Three seasons of my sh- <laughs> Great. Wait, did you really bring your own coffee yeah, this I did. time? I really brought my own oh, coffee. I love that. Yeah. You hate ours, don't you? No. It's really bad. <laughs> I am not a coffee connoisseur, but, but last- you brought your own. No, last time I was here, there was no coffee. Oh, there wasn't? No, and so that's why I brought my Oh, but coffee. Sean bought you she, Starbucks. He bought me coffee at Starbucks. So why didn't you do that again so because you could get br- free coffee I, Yeah, I could, Starbucks. but I figured it was just, it's a better, better thing to just bring your own coffee. Every time I go to Starbucks, I'll spend like 12 or $13. Yeah. Because I don't just get a coffee. I customize it, and I get breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> well, good for you. I'm, uh, I live and in And then a, I take it to my work. I live in, in a suburb, studio. so I'm not beyond uh, guilt, but I'm trying to make a small carbon footprint. Trying. I am trying what? to make a small carbon footprint. Impossible. I know, because I live in a suburb. So what do you mean you're trying to make a small carbon footprint? That what means is that I, even? I'm trying to do the things that are, are socially responsible. Like, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Number two. Was this your second least favorite? <laughs> Good. So, Draftsman is not canceled. It is now hosted by just me, and it will be canceled after nobody watches it anymore.